want to start today by asking you to imagine that you are the CEO of a big company. Now, let's say you have a meeting with other CEOs from other companies. You walk into the conference room and you see that every single person seated around the table is black. What would be the first thought that runs through your mind? Would you think that you were in the wrong room? Now, conversely, if, I, if you walked into the exact same conference room, but instead, this time, every person seated around the table is white. Would it be strange then? Why is your reaction one of surprise when confronted with a room full of CEOs who are people of colour, but not when you see a room full of white ones? You feel surprised because you associate such corporate power with white people. And if you are one of the people who thought they would feel surprised, don't worry. It doesn't automatically make you a racist. It's just that you make these associations because, in reality, only 0.6% of Fortune 500 companies have CEOs who are people of colour. And what this statistic tells us is that there are indeed very few CEOs who are people of colour. These kinds of statistics sow the seeds of stereotypes. Stereotypes that we lean on without being aware of. This becomes our default. Today, I want to persuade you to re-evaluate your intrinsic tendency to stereotype. Now, these statistics make us associate positions of power with white people. Yet, we never stop to consider that in society, a person's seniority isn't always attributed to their hard-earned achievements or the lack thereof. Instead, what the critical race theory suggests is that it is the inherent structural racism, that is, racist ideologies, structures and institutions that still exist in our society today that create and maintain racial inequality. Let me give you an example. Bob and Sam apply for the exact same job. Now, Bob, he comes from a privileged white background. And Sam, on the other hand, comes from a racially disadvantaged background. Now, Bob and Sam are equally as capable as each other. I mean, they even achieve, achieve the same A-level grades. Despite this, it's more likely that Bob will get the job. Why, you may ask? It's precisely because of the systemic racism that runs through the veins of our society. Now, whether it be the opportunities Bob was given because of his background or the natural prejudices inherent in the admissions process, these factors have clipped Sam's wings before he has even had a chance to spread them. You see, structural racism means that people of colour are being struck down and discriminated against along every single step in their lives, first in school, then at university, then in companies, workplaces, it goes on. Bob didn't get the job because he actually is um, in intellectually better or smarter or more capable, but because society has ingrained the idea that he is. Attributing characteristics to a group based on someone's race is called racial stereotyping. And it's very prevalent. I mean, in fact, it's natural. It's our way of making our very complex world a lot simpler. Now, who remembers as a child doing worksheets that teach you how to categorize? You know, the ones where you had to sort out whether something is fruit, clothes or animals, etc. Well, from an early age, we also learnt to do the same thing, but for people of different races. And in doing so, we may have unknowingly adopted certain misguided beliefs about certain races. I mean, growing up watching Hollywood films perpetuates racial stereotypes further. For example, the protagonist is commonly American while the antagonist is British. For example, um, Simba and Scar in The Lion King. Black people are often portrayed as frivolous. For example, in Shrek, Donkey babbles nonsense incessantly in an African-American accent. 
And although these small things can be disregarded as you know, a means of comedic or dramatic effect, you could say that they're insignificant, but in reality, the impact these things have on society is profound. The media has and is still playing a dangerous part in making us become accustomed to these racial stereotypes, and it cannot be dismissed. Because the problem with stereotyping is that it leads to a chain reaction. Um, this chain reaction leads us down a road that ultimately leads to discrimination. And the first stop on that road is our emotional response to these misguided beliefs, otherwise known as prejudices. And the next stop is when we act on those prejudices. When we do that, we are in effect discriminating against others based on our misguided beliefs. And often our ignorance is compounded by our ethnocentricism. This is a term that's coined by anthropologists, which simply means cultural ignorance. And let me introduce you to another scene. So let's say you're in a Japanese restaurant and suddenly you hear the loud, vigorous noise of someone slurping up noodles. Now you look up and you see the Japanese man sitting across the table across from you, ramming bulks of noodles into his mouth at an unworldly speed, a whirlwind of saliva and soup. What would you think about this? Would you think that this is improper behavior, that he's, I don't know, rude or inappropriate or even disgusting? You see, in Japanese culture, slurping is considered the polite thing to do when eating noodles. To them, it shows your appreciation and enjoyment of the dish. I mean, the louder you slurp, the more respect you're showing. So bearing this in mind, if I now reintroduce you to the exact same scene, would you still disapprove of this behavior? Without this knowledge of our cultural differences, you may have unknowingly filed this experience into stereotyping all Asians have disgusting table manners. And not only does such an experience humiliate the victim, but it can also cause embarrassment for yourself because it reveals your own ignorance. And this example is a stereotype based on our own cultural ignorance, but often racial stereotypes are actually based on some truth. For example, many studies have shown that Asians do outperform in maths. But even if you say, oh, Asians are good at maths is a positive stereotype, it can still be harmful. Firstly, it makes the person feel like they're only being seen for their race and not being valued as an individual with unique characteristics. Secondly, it could cause recipients to believe that they are simultaneously being negatively stereotyped. For example, they think that underneath this compliment, the speaker is in fact also thinking that they must be bad at sports. Or they might think it's a backhanded compliment, as in, oh, you're only good at maths because you're Asian. And thirdly, it creates pressure on the recipient to meet the vocalized expectation and all of this is simply because of the pigmentation of our skin and positive stereotypes can also have the effect of perpetuating inequality in society for example um, the positive stereotypes that African Americans are good at sports or music may have resulted in steering many of them away from attending college into becoming athletes or entertainers, professions that are statistically more likely to fail. And if positive stereotypes are already damaging, negative stereotypes, for example, all Muslims are terrorists, are even more pernicious. As mentioned, they often lead to prejudice, which inevitably leads to discrimination. And even though they are merely assumptions rather than personalized information, they have been shown to contribute to a structural deny of education, employment, housing, and other opportunities for people of color all over the world. Negative stereotyping inculcates cultural mistrust and social disharmony. A few years ago, I read the book, The Hate You Give. Some of you may have heard of it. Um, it's about an African-American teenage girl who struggles with racism. And 
It depicts a world where the word criminal is always hanging over your head simply because of your ethnicity. This is the sad reality faced by African Americans every day. I mean, imagine being in their position. Imagine driving to a remote area and being signaled to stop by the police. You feel the need to turn on your hazard lights to indicate your compliance. You find one of the brightest street lights to pull over slowly. You lay all your documents and licenses out. You keep your hands visible at all times. Because failing to do one of these things could result in a bullet being fired. Even if it was all a misunderstanding, you would not be able to do anything about it because you dropped to the floor, motionless. And all of this happens because of a single underlying assumption, the stereotype that everyone of African heritage is a criminal of sorts. So what should we do about it? How should we curtail such a dangerous phenomenon? When we find ourselves trying to paint a full picture of someone we have just met, we should stop ourselves and ask whether we're just assuming what they're like merely based on our experiences with others who look like them. And instead of only making friends with people who are like us, who people, people who have the same skin colour as us, we should step out of our comfort zone and make it a point to get to know people from different backgrounds. Because the more we interact with people who are different than us, the more we will expand our experiences and question our default assumptions. Stereotypes are the narratives that we make up about people without actually knowing them. We need to open our minds and see people as individuals. Let me leave you with a final thought. Just because someone has an accent, it doesn't mean that they're intellectually inferior. And just because someone wears long robes and a headcloth, it does not mean that they are terrorists. Just because someone has an afro, it does not mean that they're criminals. If we as individuals actively take a step to better the world by overcoming our stereotypes, then it's only a matter of time before society breaks the shackles of discrimination and we head towards a future of interracial harmony.